into places and you know the solution in a lot of American cities is to make certain places off limits to cars. Oh yeah. But that's I mean the, the obvious place that I think of in Beijing is a is the traditional Hutong uh, Nanwo Gu Xiang, mm -hmm. where there's still a lot of residents live there, mm -hmm. but it's it's clearly a walking area. But there are people that need to drive their car through it, and so you get this clash of cars and people. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, if they expand it, they ruin the the neighborhood. It's, yeah. it's no longer the, the same kind of hutong. Exactly. So I mean, it's just, it's always a trade-off between modernization and cars and and uh, you know well, the these problems are the, of living people. Yeah, yeah, these are the pictures of the old, I guess, hutongs or the streets in Beijing. Well, these old streets in Beijing, they represent a different lifestyle. You know? right. To be living in a high scraper, high buildings, and to be living in a place like that is different. Mm -hmm. And ah. well, I mean, those 64 streets are protected in Shanghai, but I guess Beijing, they've also released similar regulations protecting these hutongs. But again, the response from the public is, is just not enough. You know, it's um, Beijing should be better protected, and these old buildings sh should be better protected, better preserved. Beijing and Shanghai are different, though, in some ways. But Shanghai has other kinds of architecture. It has the old lots of uh, Western Art Deco yeah. that's also needs to be protected. But it doesn't have the problem that the hutongs does, which is the basic building material mm -hmm. uh, is is so is so substandard. I mean, those buildings, those hutong dwellings, were just not meant to last for hundreds of years. Really, yeah. they're ba basically wood and very cheap Bricks. brick and plaster. Mm -hmm. You know, so the problem is how do you actually renovate them? And re you can't do it without tearing the whole thing down and starting over again. Yeah. Whereas in Shanghai, you have a lot of these beautiful buildings that from the 20s and so forth. That it's pretty easy to preserve them and, and build to and add on to them. them yeah, at right. the very least. And I also know in a lot of the hutongs here, you know, there isn't necessarily plumbing in every courtyard house. So there are community, you know, uh, toilets that people right. will go to for for the bathroom because they don't have actually have a bathroom in their no. courtyards. Right. I mean, there are all kinds of complications like that that yeah. I think right. it also makes it a very difficult decision. You know, what do you do? I know there's a huge sort of debate going on now. You know, do we do we try to restore these uh, hutong areas in Beijing? You know, the old neighborhoods, or you know, do we do we you know make way but and actually in many cases more than just one family live in one courtyard. Right. Mm -hmm. right. It's different families, many right. families share one place and it's always crowded and life is not always easy and inconvenient right. yeah. in those places. That's true. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, on the one hand, I, I was just having a conversation with a friend mm. about this the other day, you know, on the one hand, they're beautiful and, and they are a part of Beijing's history and you don't want to see them demolished. But on the other hand, you know, for for uh, sanitation reasons, mm. crowded reasons, you know, for, if you think about it from that point of view, yeah. it's you understandable. Know, it's, it's yeah, it housing. is understandable. Yeah. The people that live there don't always ha have such nostalgic, warm feelings about those particular dwellings. They say, you know, hey, We'd like to have an upgrade too. Uh, you know, <laughs> we'd want to be, be just tourist attractions. Yeah. Right? So yeah. Good point. And what, what I heard is um, the story in in Shanghai, because you know in Shanghai, as you mentioned, they they had all these uh, Western style buildings, right. very beautiful. But again, it's like Beijing courtyard buildings. Different families, many families, they share one Western house. Mm. Uh, it was not spacious and not comfortable to live inside. What they did was. Uh, if all these families living in that place agree to move out to a new place, then this place will be uh, protected by uh, the government. The special fund will be allocated to protect uh, this uh, special uh, this building, the Western mm -hmm. building. So it's um, you know these are the new measures introduced by the local governments to protect all these buildings with a history. Right. But if you take a look at these pictures of uh, some of the old streets in Shanghai, you see why they need to be protected and why they want to protect these streets. This is Hongshan Road where you see lots of restaurants or bars or cafes mm. and trees I think those are sycamore trees mm. that are very they've been there for a long time they have yeah, yeah. and oh, uh, the, the street is not too long it's about two kilometers 
But it's so, a nice place to So that is pres pre preserve it as is, and especially the trees you don't mm. want to cut down. Exactly. Absolutely. That's one sad thing about uh, Bai Shi Tiao in Beijing. There's a, there's a long, long street that had some beautiful trees on both sides, and they're all gone. Now. Yeah, yeah. They have to be expanded, and right. the government said and they can't remove these trees. Right. Mm. If they are removed, they will, they will die. Yeah. This is Shanin Road. It's only 500 meters long. Well, these buildings are beautiful ones. Yeah, look at that. And those trees again. And this street is famous for all these old residential places for all these, you know, famous people. Uh -huh. mm. So when these famous people live there, they keep a history mm -hmm. of this city. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things I love about Shanghai is the the mix of, of yeah, Chinese right. influence and then international influence. Mm. Yeah, Whether it's right. you know British or you know European or American, I mean, it doesn't matter. But it's just a fabulous mix. That's right, because it's part of the city's history and charm. Yeah, and charm, and yeah. and, and you want to keep that uh, you know uh, a, a 21st century high-rise building. Mm. You know, is is totally different from an, an Art Deco high-rise building. And you want to keep that there as even though it's Western, mm. it's still part of Shanghai's history. Exactly. 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 Yeah. I mean different cities have different ways of protecting their old buildings yeah. and their, their history and their past. And obviously it is important to have and a I always wonder when I see these new buildings, uh, some of them in Beijing and also Shanghai, sometimes uh, they're very startling, they're very new, they're very modern, they're very mm. eye catching. But I wonder if they're gonna hold up for a long time. You know what I mean? Mm. Like some of these uh, Art Deco, they're still beautiful buildings, even now. They're, they're aesthetically pleasing. They're classic. Yeah, yeah they're classic. Yeah. I wonder if any of some of these new styles we're seeing are going to become classics 50, 100 years from now. Yeah. I you don't know. know. They probably will, because just if you think about it, like Art Deco back in the day when it first came out was probably considered edgy and yeah, modern, modern avant-garde. Yeah, yeah. you know, and now it looks like, just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like furniture, you know, Chinese furniture, the traditional ones made of hardwood mm. That's right. Yeah. and the fancy modern style ones and which one is going to last longer, you never know. We're going to take a short break and when we come back, we are going to present more stories about architecture in China. And welcome back to Crossover. And this next story is an interesting one or a sad story. Because <laughs> uh -oh. it's um, reported in, uh, on a, one of the newspapers in here uh, in, in September. One retired worker, 64-year-old in Zhengzhou in central China's Henan province, and he thought you know, the, the houses were just too expensive. He couldn't, buy, couldn't afford to buy a new one. And what he did, because he, he lived you know, on, on the ground, it was the first floor. His building was, his house was on the first floor. And what he did, was he decided to dig up a uh, new apartment underground. He, he spent four years digging up deep underground and it's six meters deep. And he got himself a 50 square meter well, house. Wow. wow. And he said if he could, he would work on to uh, dig himself an, a, a three-bedroom house on the ground. <laughs> wow. Well, it's a good, interesting story because, you know, he f somehow managed to solve his uh, housing problem. Yeah. But it is also a sad one because the, house, the houses are just too expensive and many of us couldn't just uh, afford to buy a new one. So in America, the houses are underwater, but here it's underground. Underground. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's a, and it took him so long to do this. How does, how does it work? How is it heated? Is it cold in the winter? It must, I don't know how he did that. That's incredible. And, and well, he's a miner. He's a former miner, oh. so he knows he all knows, these technical problems. He feels right at home down there. I, I suppose. Guess. <laughs> and it's, um, it's not hot in the summer and not cold in the winter, according to his uh -huh. uh, experience. Well, that's very innovative of him. And, uh, but he, he don't know, he's not quite sure whether he could move on with his new project or not. It's, it's been reported 
and everyone knows about it. Mm. And there is this legal? Is this legal? Exactly. That's the that question. could be the problem. Yeah. yeah. That could be the problem. Yeah, I'm sure because even though it's underground, I'm sure there are still a lot of codes that you need to make sure you aren't That's violating. Right. Exactly. And one is if it is legal or not. The next question is if it is safe or not. Because you're, oh, you're, you're talking right. about the building yeah. above that. Above that. Yeah. That's interesting. Huh. Mm. Charlotte, we have this idiom in English. Uh, you want to see my digs? My house, you That's know. That's right, digs. <laughs> he really can show you his digs. That's right, right. those are his digs. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so these are all these, you know, innovative, innovative ideas of uh, solving these housing problem. And this former miner, he decides to uh, <laughs> dig down underneath. And uh, there are also, uh, there's another solution about containers being turned into a new house. Oh, mm. okay. Pictures. These are containers being turned into a house. Obviously, oh, it's more than one. Containers. Oh, shipping containers. Shipping, yeah, containers. shipping containers. Shipping containers. Oh, I see. Now I see it. Yeah. Well, you know. Interesting. Are these, these are abandoned ones, but pretty. you know they. So are each of those a separate uh, little dwelling? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it was much better than I was imagining. At least the, you know they have windows and and everything. Yeah, they have everything inside. It's a living place. And the designer and builder of this project, say the uh, shipping container turned into house project, uh, uh, well, they were waiting actually for the new house. It's not ready yet. You know, they have to wait another for another half a year. So before that half a year, they decided to have something like this. new. Yeah. You know, I suppose that's not too, too different from like a mobile home. Mm. I was just going to say. Or a modular, yeah. you know, something that's right. the, the temporary, yeah. the, a lot of, a movable lot of, housing, temporary housing. Right, and a lot of mobile homes are just that size. Exactly. Really. Mm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the shipping container houses could be fancy, could be beautiful. We have another one. Those are made out of uh, yep. shipping crates? Wow. Oh, my and goodness. And this is in France. But you know, I mean, I guess, can, I, I mean, I don't know much about architecture, but that must be pretty eco-friendly. Yeah. You know? Is, this, is it comfortable to live inside a, you know, a, a container house? You know, metal could, could be box. very hot. Because I, I, I uh, when I was in university, we went to Daqing, the uh, petroleum field. Yeah. The, the living place for these people, for those workers, were basically well, the containers, that. yeah, shipping containers. Yeah, yeah. It was not not comfortable. It was very hot, hot. inside. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, unless yeah. you have air conditioners. I'm sure. I'm sure. But I think with those windows and stuff, you know, if 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 there are windows on either side then there's a way for the air to circulate. You know, mm. you, you get reasonable yeah. air circulation. And that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm sure yeah. that must help a lot. Mm. It's small, but uh, you, you put a sofa in there, you put some comfortable rugs furniture, or... rugs. It could be quite nice, actually. Yeah. And when you move away, you just get a, a crane that comes down and mm. puts you on a ship, and you can move somewhere else very easily. Mm. When you talk about a mobile home, that means you have an option. You know, you don't have to right. live in, the, in that mobile home. But for these people, it seems There's, that's their home. Right. Well, but they're do? like trailer parks and stuff in the States. The, the, basically, that, they, they sit I down mean, for good almost. They're, yeah. not, they're not moved around all the time, mm. yeah. but, but they c technically could, could be. Right, mm. right. But they, they stay in one spot. But housing is always a big problem in big cities, especially in these days in, in China, in the big cities like Beijing, Shanghai, the prices are going up mm. so quickly. I guess most of the young people uh, couldn't afford to buy buy one. Right. Yeah. Which is why you sleep here at night, as as I know. Yeah, yeah. that's why I need two cushions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's why you know before we had that one episode about this. Uh...